Tom Herndl, The Tragic Shooting and Legal Pursuit Thomas Herndl, the 27th of November 1981, the 13th of January 2004, was a British photography student, a dedicated volunteer for the International Solidarity Movement, ISM, and a passionate activist against the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. His tragic story sheds light on the human cost of the Israeli-Palestinian war. On the 11th of April 2003, while working as an ISM volunteer in the Gaza Strip, Herndl was shot in the head by an Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, sniper named Taser Haib. This act left him in a coma for nine months, and he tragically succumbed to his injuries in January 2004. The shooter, Taser Haib, was brought to justice, albeit amid significant international attention and outcry. He was convicted of manslaughter and obstruction of justice by an Israeli military court in April 2005 and subsequently sentenced to eight years in prison. The case received further attention when a British inquest jury, on 10 April 2006, returned a verdict of unlawful killing, shedding light on the circumstances of Tom's tragic death and the culpability of the IDF sniper. Tom Herndl's story is not just a tragic incident but also a testament to the dedication and bravery of individuals who choose to stand up for their beliefs and take action in war zones. It is a stark reminder of the broader Israeli-Palestinian war's devastating human toll. Following her son's tragic death, Jocelyn Herndl wrote a biography about Tom called Defy the Stars, The Life and Tragic Death of Tom Herndl, which was initially published in April 2007 and later reprinted in May 2008 under the alternative title, My Son Tom, The Life and Tragic Death of Tom Herndl. This book serves as a tribute to Tom's memory and as a means to raise awareness about the issues he was passionate about. Tom's sister, Sophie, has also been actively involved in humanitarian work and works for medical aid for Palestinians, continuing the family's commitment to advocating for the rights and well-being of Palestinians affected by the ongoing war. Tom Herndl's journey from being a student to becoming an activist is a testament to his strong sense of moral conviction and desire to make a positive impact in a war-ridden world. Here's a more detailed account of his transition. At the age of 21, while taking a break from his degree course in photographic journalism at Manchester Metropolitan University, Tom Herndl chose to engage in humanitarian work. He initially joined the group of Human Shields in Iraq before the 2003 Iraq War. This group aimed to act as a nonviolent deterrent to protect Iraqi civilians and infrastructure from the potential harm caused by the war. As war became increasingly inevitable, and the group faced financial constraints, Tom Herndl relocated to Jordan. In Jordan, he decided to allocate £500 of his own money towards medical supplies for refugees fleeing the impending war in Iraq. During this time, he came across the International Solidarity Movement, ISM, an organization committed to nonviolent resistance against the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories. Inspired by their mission, Tom made the decision to travel overland to Gaza, a region heavily affected by the Israeli Palestinian War. Upon arriving in the town of Rafah in Gaza on 6 April 2003, Tom Herndl began to document and report on the situation in the region by emailing images of the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, and the Palestinian people back to his family and the world. His commitment to this cause was evident in the transformation of the tone in his journals. He believed that being on the ground in Gaza allowed him to witness firsthand the harsh realities of the war and to shed light on what he saw as a pressing humanitarian crisis. His quote, What do I want from this life? What makes you happy is not enough. All the things that satisfy our instincts only satisfy the animal in us. I want to be proud of myself. I want more. I want to look up to myself, and when I die, I want to smile because of the things I have done, not cry for the things I haven't done, reflects his deep sense of purpose and a desire to make a meaningful difference in the world. Tom Herndl's transition from a student to an activist illustrates the power of personal convictions and the profound impact that individuals can have when they are willing to take risks and dedicate themselves to humanitarian causes, even in the face of danger. Tom Herndl's tragic death occurred in the midst of a volatile and dangerous situation in the Gaza border town of Rafah in April 2003. 
The circumstances surrounding his shooting and subsequent medical treatment are as follows. On the day of the incident, the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, were conducting a mission in Rafah, a town located near the border of the Gaza Strip. Tom Herndl and a group of activists, numbering nine in total, were in the area. They had planned to set up a peace tent on a nearby road to obstruct IDF tank patrols as an act of protest against the Israeli occupation. According to the IDF's account of the incident, Palestinian militants initiated an attack on an Israeli checkpoint in the area. In response, the IDF soldiers at the checkpoint returned fire. This exchange of gunfire prompted the group of activists, including Herndl, to abandon their protest and seek cover. In a tragic turn of events, Tom Herndl reportedly left his place of cover and ran into the street during the ongoing gunfire. At this point, an IDF soldier shot him in the head. He was immediately taken to a Palestinian hospital in Rafah, where he was declared clinically dead. In an effort to provide him with medical care, the IDF transferred Tom Herndl to Israel, specifically to Sorica Medical Center in Bishbur. There, he was kept on a ventilator and underwent surgery to address his severe head injury. Six weeks after his initial surgery, he was transported back to the United Kingdom and admitted to the Royal Hospital for Neurodisability in London. However, he remained in a persistent vegetative state, suffering from irreversible brain damage. Tragically, Tom Herndl succumbed to his injuries and remained in a coma for nine months before his passing on 13 January 2004. Tom Herndl's father shared the account of the incident as relayed by ISM and Palestinian witnesses during a British inquest. According to their version of events, Tom had observed a group of children playing in the vicinity and noticed that bullets were hitting the ground dangerously close to them. He acted heroically, successfully moving one girl out of harm's way. However, when he returned to assist another child, he was shot while kneeling down to collect her, resulting in the devastating injury that ultimately led to his death. Tom Herndl's tragic death serves as a stark reminder of the dangers and complexities of working as an activist in war zones, and his actions in trying to protect innocent children from harm exemplify his dedication to humanitarian causes. The investigation and trial related to Tom Herndl's shooting and subsequent death involved a series of developments, and there were various elements to the legal process. Initial IDF Inquiry Initially, the IDF conducted a routine internal inquiry into Tom Herndl's shooting. The inquiry concluded that he had been shot accidentally in the crossfire and suggested that his group of activists was effectively functioning as human shields. Witnesses' accounts and pressure for investigation, witnesses at the demonstration in Rafah, as well as Tom Herndl's parents, disputed the IDF's account of the incident. They claimed that he had been deliberately shot while trying to shield Palestinian children from harm. Pressure from his parents, supported in part by British Foreign Secretary Jack Straw, prompted further investigation. Further investigation ordered, as a result of mounting pressure, in October 2003, Israel's Judge Advocate General Menachem Finkelstein ordered the IDF to open a more extensive military police investigation into Tom Herndl's death. Taser Habe's testimony, Taser Habe, the IDF soldier who shot Tom Herndl, initially claimed that he had shot at a man in military fatigues, despite photographic evidence showing Herndl was wearing a bright orange jacket, indicating he was a foreigner. Habe was an award-winning marksman with a telescopic sight on his rifle. He initially claimed to have aimed near Herndl's head but stated that he moved. Habe further asserted that there was a policy of shooting at unarmed civilians at the time. Autopsy report and defense claims, during the trial, the defense attempted to raise doubts about the cause of Tom Herndl's death. A military court heard claims that he had died of pneumonia and that the pneumonia had not been adequately treated. It was suggested that the large amounts of morphine administered to Herndl contributed to his death, but the court rejected these claims. Change in testimony In January 2004, Taser Habe appeared in court, and his testimony changed. Initially, he admitted to shooting near an unarmed civilian as a deterrent. However, upon further interrogation, he admitted to unintentionally hitting Tom Herndl. Indictments After Habe's changed testimony, 
he was indicted on several charges, including manslaughter. The charges were later expanded to include multiple counts, such as obstruction of justice, false testimony, and incitement to false testimony. Trial and verdict Sergeant Habe's trial began in May 2004, and he pleaded not guilty to all charges. On 27 June 2005, he was convicted of manslaughter, obstruction of justice, giving false testimony, and inducing comrades in his unit to bear false witness. He was sentenced to 11 and a half years in prison, with eight years to be served. Military Police Report Access Tom Herndl's family and their legal team faced challenges in accessing the military police report that led to the trial. After an appeal to the Israeli Supreme Court, the state prosecution offered the legal team access to the report, which allowed them to determine whether more serious charges, such as murder, could be filed and to investigate potential responsibility higher up the chain of command. The trial and subsequent conviction of Taser Habe marked an important legal step in addressing Tom Herndl's tragic death and the circumstances surrounding it. However, the case also raised questions about the broader context of the Israeli-Palestinian war and the use of force in such situations. The coroner's inquest and subsequent developments surrounding the shooting of Tom Herndl shed light on the circumstances of his death and the wider context of violence in the Israeli-Palestinian war. Here are some key points. Unlawful killing verdict. On 10 April 2006, an English inquest jury at St. Pancras Coroner's Court in London determined that Tom Herndl had been unlawfully killed. This verdict contradicted the initial IDF assertion that his shooting had been accidental. Tom's father expressed his belief that there was a general policy to shoot civilians in the area without fear of reprisals, which was echoed by the soldier who fired the fatal shot, Taser Habe. Habe had previously stated that the Israeli army fires freely in Rafah. Statements by legal representatives, Michael Mansfield QC, who represented Tom Herndl's family, emphasized the significance of the verdict by stating that the Israeli Defense Force had been found culpable of murder. This verdict raised questions about the use of force in war zones and the responsibility of military personnel. Similar incidents and international concern, the inquest into Tom Herndl's death followed another inquest that found British journalist James Miller had been killed by an Israeli soldier just three weeks after Herndl's shooting, not far from Herndl's location. The coroner, Dr. Andrew Reid, expressed concerns about the risk faced by British citizens in the region and raised questions about command within the IDF. He suggested that similar incidents, including possible prosecutions of Israeli commanders, needed to be addressed. Media coverage, Tom's mother, Jocelyn Herndl, wrote a commentary in The Guardian in which she highlighted the disparities in how lives were valued in the occupied territories based on nationality. She pointed out the different values attached to the lives of Israelis, internationals, and Palestinians. Documentary, a dramatized documentary titled The Shooting of Thomas Herndl, was broadcast on Channel 4 in October 2008. The documentary portrayed the events leading to Tom's shooting and the subsequent legal processes. It received critical acclaim and accolades, including a British Academy Television Award. Artistic Tributes Tom Herndl is memorialized in the cantata, The Skies Are Weeping, composed by Philip Munger. This cantata, written in memory of Rachel Corrie, another ISM member killed by the IDF, includes a movement dedicated to Tom Herndl. The piece reflects the impact of these tragic events on a broader artistic and cultural landscape. Tom Herndl's case serves as a poignant example of the complex and deeply troubling issues surrounding the Israeli-Palestinian war and the impact it has on individuals and their families, as well as the broader international community.